In this lesson, we'll take a, the, a look at the concept of limits, and I'm going to use this parabola f of x equals x squared plus 1. And we're focusing on this red dot here, the point where x is 1. It's actually the point 1, 2. The table on the left uh, starts at the top with x values below 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.75. Notice that x values are getting closer and closer to 1, but approaching it from the left, from below. And so as you trace along the table here, it's the same as tracing along the curve. There, x is about 0 0.5. And as you see my cursor moving, x is getting closer to 1 from the left side. And so notice as you approach 1 from the left side, the function values or y values get closer and closer to 2. And you can see that as you trace along the graph here, y is about 1.5, maybe 1.7, 1 1.8, 1.9, getting close to a value of 2. And so that's what a left-hand limit means as you approach a certain point in the graph from the left side. If you look at the table at the bottom, 1.5, 1.25, 1.1, 1 .1, we're starting above 1 and approaching it from above. And so we're getting closer and closer to 1. So that's the same as on the graph here, starting about here, because that's where about uh, x is 1.5. And tracing along the curve towards the point, don't worry about up or down, we're talking about left and right here. So I'm approaching from the right side there. And so notice that as you approach from the right side, the function values or y values are getting, again, closer and closer to 2. And you can see that in the graph. y is about 3 there, 2.5 there, maybe 2.1 there, so you're getting closer to a y value of 2 at that red dot. And so we say as x approaches 1, the value of x squared plus 1 approaches a value of 2. And so this is the way we read that. The limit of x squared plus 1 as x approaches the value of 1 equals 2. The way we write that sentence in mathematical terminology is this. The limit as x approaches 1 of x squared plus 1 equals 2. You actually can read it this way as well. The limit of x squared plus 1 as x approaches 1 equals 2. That's probably the preferred way to, re to uh, read it actually. So that's what left and right hand limits mean is you approach a certain point in the graph from the left or you approach from the right. Notice in this case the left hand limit and right hand limit are both 2 and that's why the limit actually exists and is 2. If those limits aren't the same and that's what the next page talks about then the limit wouldn't exist and I'll give you an example of that in the last page in the, the last example. Flipping over to the second page the limit of some function as x approaches a is equal to some quantity l uh, L for limit. That simply means that the function, the y values of the function, approach that number L as x approaches the value of A. Now, the, the terminology for left and right hand limits look like this. If x approaches A from, and the plus means it's written as a superscript, uh, that means the right hand limit. If you see as x approaches a from the negative side, it doesn't mean negative a, it approaches a from the negative side from below, that means the left hand limit. So these two things are the left and right hand limits. And we're saying if they're not the same, then we would say the limit of the function as x approaches a does not exist. There's a mathematical abbreviation for it does not exist that you might see in textbooks at times. If you ever see d and e, that's an abbreviation for does not exist. Now, if the left hand limit and the right hand limit, notice that x approaches a in both cases. This is completely different if you said x approached a here and x approached b or c or something like that there. We're only talking about the same place here. If the left and right hand limits are equal and they're both equal to this value l, then we would say the limit of the function as x approaches a is equal to l. Now, a little bit about c continuity, where a graph is continuous or discontinuous. If a function is defined at a certain value, we'll call it a, so if f of a is defined, and the limit of the function as x approaches a is the same value as the, whatever that function value is, then the function is said to be continuous where x equals a. Otherwise, if, for example, that limit existed, but it wasn't the same as f of a, then the graph would be said to be discontinuous at a. And we will take a look at examples of that. Uh, there's actually one in this note and some more in a later lesson. Now, over to page 3, it says, for each sequence, do the following. State the limit if it exists, and if it doesn't, show y. And we're going to show that graphically. And then in number two, write a limit expression to demonstrate the end behavior. Write it mathematically for each sequence. 
So the first one here, it's a half 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Notice we're just doubling. This is the general term formula for this particular sequence. If we put uh, any number in place of n, we'll get that term number. Uh, that term value, so for example, we want the, uh, the, the fifth term. We will put 5 in place of n. 5 minus 2 is 3, so 2 to the power of 3 gives you 8. So we're going to graph these terms. The first term is a half. So the first term is a half, so there's my dot at a half. Notice that uh, each block vertically is 2 here, so that's why that just seems just barely off the n-axis here. Uh, second one's 1, so second term is 1. Next one's at 2, and then we'd be here at 4. Uh, the fifth term is 8, so we'll bring the 8 in. And then the next one's 16, so there is a 16. Next one would be 32, so it's off the top of the graph here. And notice it's growing, and it's growing very fast. There's no limiting value here. The terms just keep on getting bigger. For example, if you put, uh, let's say you want the 102nd term. If I put 102 in place of n, 102 minus 2 would be 100. We'd be valuing 2 to the power of 100. It would be a huge number. And so the bigger the value of n, the larger the term is going to be. So there isn't any limiting value to this sequence at all. So we would write that the limit does not exist because it continually just gets larger and larger and larger. And the way we write that mathematically is we say the limit of the quantity 2 to the power of n minus 1 as n tends towards infinity, so as we talk about larger and larger terms, it's infinite, so it equals infinity, it tends towards infinity. For the b example here, the terms are a third, so the first term is about a third, uh, second one's a half, three-fifths, that's about 0 0.6, actually exactly 0 0.6, and then two-thirds, which is about 0.67 repeating, five-sevenths, and I actually plotted more of them. You notice that they're always getting larger, but they're not growing fast like in A here. And so I've got, I've got a general term uh, expression here, n over n plus 2. Notice that the second and fourth terms have actually been simplified. If um, in the second term we would actually have uh, 2 in place of n and a 2 here, so you actually have uh, it would be 2 over 2 plus 2 or 4, and of course that reduces to a half. Uh, for the fourth term, this one here, uh, n would be 4 instead. So actually that's 4 over 4 plus 2 is 6, and uh, 4, 6 reduces to 2 thirds. So notice that uh, the numerator in the unsimplified version is always the term number. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the next one would be 6 on top. The denominators are always too bigger n plus 2. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. So the, t the sequence, the terms do continue to grow, grow larger and larger, but there's a limit on how high they go. Uh, and if you take a look at this, for example, uh, let's say we were going to write out the 100th term. Let's say n was 100. So it would be 100 over in the denominator, n would be 100, and we would have 102. And that's approaching a value of 1. It's getting really close to 1. For example, if we write the term 1,000, it would be 1,000 over 1,000 and 2. And while that's not yet equal to 1, and it'll never get to 1, it is certainly getting a lot closer. So we see that uh, the, the, the values are getting closer and closer to 1, so the limit is 1. And the way you write it mathematically is the limit as n tends towards infinity, n being the term number, so we're talking about larger and larger terms, of n over n plus 2 is equal to 1. It approaches a value of 1. Now, just because it's saying that limit equals 1 doesn't mean it'll ever get there. It'll get closer and closer and closer, but just because it says the limit equals 1 doesn't mean it'll actually reach 1. Limit means it's getting closer to some value, not that it equals that value. 